There is a series <coughs> such as this. As you can see, a very simple way. If you ask me, you're the dog. But you have no idea how much it excites rustic audiences. You have to see drawn swords and golden crowns and princes and princesses <coughs> living happily ever afterwards. Anyhow, we say an old passion, stale stock, romantic love drama. One of a hundred, you might say. Quite conventional. Did you notice anything peculiar about the play? I would rather think I did, but I would rather hear your own explanation of it. I wrote this play for a bet. I won the bet. I did not instantly win the money, because to tell the truth, I made the bet with an actress like myself. He was a showman with a very popular and successful set of puppets, and his plays were always infested with villains. Well, he better me that I could not write a play without a villain. That was the most easy, allowing me to make the conditions, and the most virtuous person may act or appear like a villain. But I swore I would do something more. I swore I would make a whole play in which not only is not one villain, <coughs> there's not one single deed of villainy. Yes, I noticed that. They all behaved handsomely and going for their lights. They were all at the best. Everyone behaved well. I just want to play is rather short. A simple plot, a simple solution. You might even say, Simple ideas. And then... Were you going to say they were simple characters? No! Ah, that's the burning light. Those light those things turn transparent. Now I know I what I said you could be in the heart. I know what it is you desire. I do not call it blamable, though some would call it blasphemy. Whether it were possible is another thing. If you know my secret, you would know why it is that I asked you for a miracle. Because the people in your play are really not simple people. You see, I knew them. I knew them very well. I've met that true little one twenty taverns or tramping twenty roads. I was with the army out, but I saw the victories of Fonte Arabia. Do you know what I mean? Believe me, they're not all simple characters. They're very passionate, very complicated, very real people, capable of a thousand other things besides what they have to do on the stage. Only moves swiftly and smoothly and soon over, because they only be right. When a servant is a good servant, you hardly realize that you have a servant. And so these very real people flash by you in a few moments, and they seem unreal, because they only be right. Do you want them to do wrong? No, no, no. They could be right, but they would be right. They have it in them to do exactly what they do in the play. They have it in them. And yet they have nothing in them. You are not content when they do right, and you do not want them to do wrong. What do you want them to do? I want them to be and not to do. I want them to exist. You were saying you knew them intimately. I knew them down to the vitals, and they do not exist. Ah, uh, the criminal to last. On the tragedy of the author. Of the human author, perhaps. You would say that they exist in my mind. Ah, as a tragedy of the author indeed. Why they only existed because I wanted to get them out of my mind. I wanted them separated from me and my life, and living lives quite different, and entirely their own. And so after all, they are. Am I a princess? Can you look at me as man to man and say that I'm a delicate, sensitive, naked waking with a turn for religion? My whole purpose in creating these personalities was to put them away from me, to put them a long way off, where I could look at them from the outside. Which way have I put them? They exist, they have minds of their own. Why have they not got wills of their own? Ah, you want them to have wills of their own. I begin by reminding you that no man can work a miracle. But to some men, there has been granted a sign. Father, these people deserve to be alive. <laughs> They're everything else except alive. They're intelligent, complex, combative, brilliant, bursting with life, and yet they're not alive. <coughs> Critics who talk about real life say that my romantic ending is quite unreal. They say that the princess and the poet and the soldier and the saint would hardly have access to honeymoon. They're wrong. I know these people are much better than they do. It's they who go to labels and pay off the princess and the soldiers, practical people. It is they who is led by the label of the poet. 
For the princess, though she has a fault, more fault from the day of the yes, really does care about justice, the right ruling of things for the poor. And she is the first princess who ever had a poor man for a prime minister. The poet is not a poet, but a critic. His wallet is stuff that's close to real experiences. But to the king, war is really poetical, a thing of pageants and tapestries. The princess doesn't rule the whole world, while the king, who could conquer the whole world, doesn't want to rule it in the least. He wants to win battles with a romantic risk. In fact, he has exactly the same view of them as Don Maria. And as neither of them ever have any doubts about the duties of a lady or a gentleman, they were passed their lives quite happily. In a dream. I've told you all this, Father, but I'm not quite sure that you've heard me. Maybe to show you that I do rather see the Father, Father's moving. I never ran it up. These seven. Did you say that these waxworks and dolls were, were ghastly and black belly because they were only puppets? They are ghastly because they are not I'm ghastly because they are not puppets. <laughs> now come in. You have put them outside yourself. They have wills of their own. They are living lives of their own. Uh, what is my play? It is their play now. <coughs> the most monstrous of monsters are marching across your stage, shaking the earth like dragons. The most towering, the most terrible creatures that life ever let loose upon chaos. Stand back, stand out of their way. They are living 